The story of Wilt is mysterious. He dominated the court like nobody in history, and there's no shortage of reports of inhuman feats that he was capable of, but there's little proof of any of it. So today we're putting them to the test by adding Wilt to the modern NBA. He would join the 2022 NBA draft and be taken number one by the Magic. As a rookie, he was already living up to his legend from the 60s. Instantly, he was establishing himself as one of the best players in the league. He'd end this season with a handful of personal accolades such as Rookie of the Year, All-Star, and All-NBA. These awards would come due to his incredibly impressive stat line put up as a rookie, and it was also enough to turn Orlando into a playoff team to face Cleveland. However, this was probably the worst matchup they could have gotten with Allen anchoring the paint for the Cavs. Will would still be the fun opportunities to score through Jared Allen's incredible defense, but the entire team would single in on Will in the paint, and most trips down, he'd be overwhelmed. He had a great first season, but it wasn't time to make a playoff run just yet. In 2024, Wilt's Magic team didn't change much. They maintained most of the same young core, but they were all starting to improve. Especially Wilt, as he would see massive upgrades to every facet of his game and take the league by storm. Only in his second year, Wilt's already an MVP. I'm starting to become a believer in the Wilt Chamberlain mitts. DeMar DeRozan was leading the Bulls versus Wilt in round one. Wilt was destroying Chicago as their starting center was Tristan Thompson, and his lack of size or strength was a major flaw in the Bulls' defense. He was getting his however he wanted and got Orlando a 3-1 lead. It wasn't over just yet, though, as DeMar would lead his team over the next two games. He was the only star left in Chicago at this point, and he was carrying the Bulls. And he would get this series to a Game 7. Luckily, Game 7 was on Wilt's home floor, and right off the jump, he'd start getting into his bag. He was aggressive in the paint and was grueling at the limited paint protection. Game 7 was his spotlight, and he put on a show with 55-18 and 18 to go along with the win. Round 2 versus the Hornets wasn't as eventful with Wilt matched up against Vucevic, and he won easily. But the conference finals would be more of a challenge. Atlanta had size to throw a Wilt in the paint defensively. On the other side, Trey Young was a maestro with the ball during the pick and roll, either by scoring or by drawing in the opposing D and fighting a teammate on the roll. The Hawks would protect home court and earn a 2-0 lead, but Chamberlain was ready to protect his court too. In games 3 and 4, he would become the difference maker on defense versus Trey, and on offense, he'd overcome the extra size Atlanta had by using a combination of his strength and his speed. Working Capella in the post was working wonders, and he'd have this thing tied up headed into a Game 5. And Game 5 was huge, and Wilt knew it. The MVP was a man on a mission in this critical match. He was in the post versus Atlanta and showing off a deep array of moves. He was absolutely on fire and was leading his team. By the start of the fourth, he already had 44 points, and you're probably assuming Orlando had a huge lead, but Trey Young was putting in just as much much work as Wilt, and he barely breezed by the Magic to take Game 5. It wasn't over yet, though, and Wilt was chipping back into this one with a Game 6 win and a chance late in Game 7. With the game close late, Orlando would get the ball to Wilt in the post. After the catch, he'd make a fast move and extend the lead for the Magic. Atlanta had plenty of time still, and the next trip down, they would attack with Trey Young in the pick and roll, who would find a wide-open Johnson in the corner for the biggest three of his career. This Game 7 is literally down to the wire, all tied up a minute and a half left. The Orlando Magic have it. Cole Anthony's trying to get a big roll with Will. They get down low to Will Chamberlain. He's been killing Atlanta all series, and he gets the hook in for the two-point lead. After Will's shot, Atlanta got John Collins down low with a mismatch and a chance to tie it. He'd go for a post fade, but was just off. And now Orlando has a chance to extend this lead with a minute left. You score here in your fantastic chance to make a trip to NBA Finals. Cole Anthony tries to get it a Will out of bounds. Hawks ball. Atlanta has it now with another chance to tie it or take the lead with a three. Trey Young going quick. He gets it to Okongwu. Will is there. Okongwu gets the board. Okongwu's lays off again. Magic ball. Orlando with another chance to deliver the dagger here in a win or go home. Game seven. Will Chamberlain on a slip. Cole Anthony trying to get it to him. Down low to the post. He's deep. No way he doesn't score the double. It's back up to Cole Anthony. 10 seconds left in the shot clock. 30 seconds left in the game clock. Cole Anthony driving in. DeJounte Murray to lay. That's tough. DeJounte gets the board. The Hawks are pushing the pace here. 24 seconds left. Down by two. They got to score. Trey Young's double to get it up to DeJounte. Swinging around to Johnson. He just hit a big three. Can he do it again? Trey Young with the screen. That's just weird. Johnson pull up. It's off. Part of the board. Start going to the line. He hit the first free throw. If you hit this one, I think it's going to do it. He makes a four-point lead. And in just year two, Will Chamberlain is already headed to the NBA Finals. He was up against a high-flying Morant fresh off of a gun suspension. Porzingis also joined Memphis in the offseason and worked well with Jaw. To round off their big three, they had the Defensive Player of the Year owning the painted area, and I'm not talking about only on defense. They were way too much for Will, and his season was over. 
those final stats were far from impressive and i'm getting the feeling could he possibly be a playoff choker or maybe it was just his team and his point guards who apparently didn't really like Wilt. Luckily, though, in 2025, Jalen Suggs was having a breakout season and was on pace to become one of the best guards in this league. Pick and rolls between the new star duo had the NBA in a chokehold and opposing teams were scrambling to find ways to slow it down. Chamberlain continued his high-level play and earned another MVP to go along with his team, earning the top record for the first time. In the postseason, he'd smash the AC to Heat, but would follow up with a rematch versus the Hawks. Unfortunately, Suggs was playing through a leg injury and Wilt would be by himself. The double and triple teams were coming from all angles on the court. As soon as Wilt would touch the ball, he was swarmed by a sea of red jerseys. The frustration seemed to be getting to him and he would bash Young with a hard foul that would lead to a one-game suspension and Orlando simply didn't have enough to keep up and they would fall in five. To make matters worse, Cole Anthony moved to Brooklyn the next season and Wilt did end up getting another MVP this season even after losing his point guard, but he fell to the sixth seed to face the Bucks. This was Wilt's first matchup with the other top center in the league. When we have more mobility off the dribble than Wilt, it would attack him around the perimeter, avoid his shot blocking. Just the opposite was true on the other end as Wilt used his superior strength to bang with Victor down low. But in the end, Wimby will come out on top this time and it wouldn't be their last battle. Don't do it, Wimby, Yavin. Don't do it. Delay. Oh my God. Year five was even worse as Wilt was in the play-in. Bro, what is this team? How did they get all of those players? The Bulls maintained the lead from start to finish of this game and they would go on to win. Wilt had one more chance versus the Knicks and thankfully for him, they didn't have a lot of talent. Chamberlain would run the show here and refuse to miss the playoffs as he defeated New York to move on to round one. And Wilt was locked in for round one versus the defending champs. At this point, it was expected how he would perform. He looked unstoppable just as he had every game and was plowing through Detroit while putting up immaculate stats. But again, his team was still falling short. Pairing Orlando's shortcomings with the great play of Cunningham was a recipe for disaster as Wilt faced defeat yet again. And with another failed season with Orlando, you have to wonder, is he going to change teams here this year in free agency? And he decided to take his talents to Boston. He formed an elite front court with teammate Bam Adebayo at the four. And with Moran playing point guard, this team was the real deal. By absolutely no surprise, this team was by far the best in the entire league. Wilt had another MVP season under his belt by putting up even more insane numbers now that he had star talent to spread the defensive pressure to. And after an incredible season with 70 wins, there was confidence headed into the playoffs. Their round one matchup was no real threat. The Wizards team had no notable players and had no chance versus John Wilt. In round two, there was a chance for a revenge versus Detroit. And this time around, Wilt had superstar help on his team. While he got swept the year prior, this season was going to be different. The Celtics were at an elite level and they would get the job done. Their final hurdle was a depleted Cavaliers team that lost most of their pieces and Boston had a chance to close it out. Boston's up three to two in this series, but they're currently down one in game six with just over or just under a minute to go. Ty Batisha, delay, I don't even know who that is. Boston is leading this series three to two and they're currently up by one in game six with a chance to close it out. The Cavaliers have the ball. Bailey with it here at the top, he's driving it in. The tough little lay gets it in. They're up by one. Boston has it now. Obiata Natsa. I don't know who this guy is, but he has the ball. I don't see Wilt on the court. They get a flout. Back to his slam is good. The Cavaliers used their last time out, and the Celtics have all the starters back in the game now. John Wilt are in. Black driving. He slams it over him. Anthony Black with a huge dunk to take the lead again. 28 seconds left. Obiata has it. Timeout Celtics. The Celtics now have a chance to answer that huge dunk from Black. Are they going to go to Wilt? Are they going to go to John? Wilt has it now. They kick it out to Oben Yatza. They keep giving it to this guy in the clutch. Wilt Chamberlain trying to set the screen. Oben Yatza, the right side, all by himself. He's driving in, and he dunks on him. The Cavaliers winning that with 15 seconds remaining. Bailey has it at the top. He's slowing it down. 10 seconds left in the game. Down by one. Cleveland trying to take this lead back. Six seconds left. It's looking like they're going for the last shot. The screen. Bailey curling around a tough three. It's off. And the Cavaliers lose. The Celtics are headed to the finals. And in the finals, they were matched up with a new look Young Warriors roster. An opportunity like this may not present itself again, and Wilt knew it. He brought his A game for this series and demanded his team feed him the ball to attack. He was one win away from a ring, and it looked like luck was finally on his side. There was late at the end of the tunnel, and he wasn't passing up his chance. In game five, he dropped a new playoff career high with 60 points. He was scoring from ever on the court, and he seemed possessed with the desire to win a ring. He even drained home a triple in route to finally winning a championship and a finals MVP.
The following year, he was right back in the playoffs versus Charlotte in round one that he would beat before facing Cleveland for the third time and continuing to go undefeated versus them in the playoffs. And this could be where Will ends up losing this Bulls team he's matched up with in the conference finals is out of control. I couldn't have been more wrong though. Chamberlain was shutting down the paint versus a Bulls team relying on scoring close to the basket and they would end up sweeping them. And I'm actually shocked that the 8 C Hornets gave these Celtics the biggest challenge out of all these teams. That Bulls team was stacked. They still got swept somehow. Celtics are going to the finals. Just like the previous season, Wilt had an easy finals matchup. But Sir Thompson was leading this Wolves team, but his supporting cast was iffy. Morant was injured though, so this series was all on Wilt, but he was up for the challenge. He continued his typical strategy of pounding the paint, and it was still working. Minnesota didn't have anything it could do to stop him, and he was free to rule this series. After winning three games straight, he would start off down big in game four, but would come back by the end to complete the repeat without jaw. His time of easy trips to the finals was about to be over though, because Victor Wembanyama had finally join a contender in the East. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to go through this team to get back to the finals. And it would be sooner than expected in round two. It was the battle of the Giants in this series, and this was the Hollywood marquee matchup that fans were waiting for, and it was as exciting as everybody had hoped. They were each averaging over 30 points per game in this series, with Wemby having the slight edge, but overall, they were matching each other's offensive efforts in a back-and-forth affair. This was already panning out to be an all-time rivalry for years to come, as they battled it out to the death. Both players were deadlocked in their abilities, and neither could get their team a clear edge as the deciding moments of a game seven would ultimately determine their fate. We're in a game seven and the Celtics are down by two right now. Jaw has it. Victor Wembanyama has gone and will down low. Jaw ISO one on one here on the left side of the court. He's driving in. Jaw the floater. He gets it in. Come on. Miami with a chance. Now you have to watch out for Victor Wembanyama. He's a problem here in the clutch. He has that Hall of Fame clutch shooter. He's dangerous. They get to him on the left side. Will Chamberlain guard him. The step back. He's driving in. No one abounds. Victor the dunk. Right side this time instead of the left. They're trying to get that little Wilt. They get it down there to him. Wilt, the power move. He gets back to jump it. The lay. And he gets it in tight game. Miami has it again. 50 seconds left. We're in Boston. They got home man. Victor Wembanyama in the post. Victor the drive. Don't do it, Wembanyama. Don't do it. The lay. Oh, my God. Boston with it. A chance to take the lead here. Uzo driving it in. Get the ball to Wilter Jaw. Stop, man. You're doing too much. They get Isaac in the post. The foul. The free throw line. They split the free throws. Miami's on a fast break. Jalen Suggs. They get it to Wembanyama. The tough lay. It's off. Wilter rebound. Oh, no. They're sending Wilt to the line. Free throw number two for Wilt. This is huge. They get them both. This thing is far from over, though. Miami still has a lot of time. They get it inbound to Jalen Suggs. They get it over Collier. Suggs the screen. They kick it to the corner. Stokes for three. It's off. It's off. That might do it. As long as Giants won, this is pretty much over. He gets the first. And Boston's going to advance. Brandon Miller was the big name in the conference finals, except for the fact that he was injured and would miss the series. With Miller out, the Celtics were heavily favored to win it. But the Sixers weren't cutting themselves out, and they were playing great team basketball to try to fight for the win in this series, and they would end up shocking the world. They really just lost to the Sixers. They beat Wemben Yama's Heat, but couldn't beat this Philly team? This loss was the beginning of the end for Boston. Well, things in Boston are not looking good. Everyone left Wilt and he's on the last year of his contract. There was no time to feel bad for himself though. He was going to have to play his best basketball ever if he was going to continue his streak of making the playoffs. As the only player worth the damn on the roster, he would see the highest usage rate in NBA history and the numbers that he was able to produce reminded you of his numbers from the 60s. Even with this unbelievable personal performance, it still wasn't going to be enough as his team would fall to the worst record in the NBA. And surprisingly, he was planning on re-signing with Boston. I cannot imagine why he wants to stay in Boston I mean, he does claim he slept with 20,000 women in his lifetime. So maybe Tinder is going crazy here in Boston. I don't know. Apparently, he changed his mind, though, as he became a Laker. He was joined by star LaMelo Ball and also reunited with Morant. Manchero would round out their starting lineup to recreate a lob city in LA. This was Wilt's best team so far, and with LaMelo setting him up, he felt unbeatable. But apparently, they were very beatable as they dealt with injuries all year. Back healthy the following year, Wilt would help his team battle for a better record. This would be one of his last chances as a 
Jokic was catching up to him, and he helped his team earn the second seed. An easy would be an understatement as Will abused an aged Jokic in round one. Round two was against Cooper Flag in Portland, but Will and Jaw in the bigger role was too much for him, and they would win this series. And one seed in Utah was up next. And to be quite honest, this Jazz lineup does look pretty solid, but Brandon Miller's gonna miss the entire series with a pulled left hamstring. I'm pretty sure that this guy missed another series versus Will in the past with an injury. He just cannot catch a break. Will was excited to be in the finals again and was battling to the T with Utah to get there. Without Miller, they still put up a fight and got this series to seven, but eventually Will would have the last laugh as he was advancing to the NBA Finals, where yet again, he was meeting Wemby in a battle of the centers. Victor was playing at a surreal level, even greater than their last matchup. His game had evolved even more and the aging Will was having a hard time keeping up and Wemby went up two to zero. Wilt would dig deep though and find a way to stay in this series until Victor pushed back himself and was seconds away from from winning a ring. The Lakers are down three to two in this series. In this game six, Miami has a two point lead. They have to win this or their season is over and Wilt's clock is running out as he's aging. Lamella with the ball, driving it in. He kicks out to Agabagaji. Will Chamberlain setting the screen. Get in the get in the hands of Wilt, man. It gets the Wilt. He chucks it and ties the game. Wembenyama bringing the ball up the court. He's attacking Wilt. He wants this one-on-one -on -one match. He's trying to prove he's better. The pump, the leader. It's off, Wilt the board. The Lakers have the ball with just over 60 seconds remaining. What are they cooking up here? LaMelo, he's got two bigs with options for screens. Will Chamberlain with the screen. Wembenyama's covering that pick and roll perfectly. They kick it out to Akabaji again. Three seconds left, they don't have a lot of time. He's gonna have to hoist one. The little fade away is no good. Wembenyama with the ball, 44 seconds remain, 18 seconds on the shot clock. He's driving it in. The little man on him, the lay, it's good. LaMelo has the ball now for the Lakers. Down by two, LaMelo all the way. He, he gets fouled. With this thing all tied up, Miami is not using their last timeout yet. Nine seconds separates the shot clock and the game clock. What is Miami gonna do here? Sucks with it. They get into Weminyama versus Wilt. The ISO, the dribbles, he kicks down low to Stokes. The hook, bang, it's in. LA with another possession, their last hope here. Tie it up and force overtime or take the lead and force a game seven. LaMelo is holding the ball for that last shot. Burning some clock, eight seconds remaining on the clock. LaMelo with it, one-on-one. -on -one. Is he gonna get a screen? It's all LaMelo here. Three seconds, LaMelo, ISO, the drive, the pull up. It's off. After the big loss, John LaMelo signed with new teams and Wilt was left alone again. Over the course of the next few seasons, he was still under contract with LA and was averaging some good numbers for himself. He was still a top three player in the NBA in the main respect of the league, but his team didn't see any success. In 2035, he rejoined the Celtics to finish out his career. The team was awful, but he was content. He would retire after the 2039 season with an impressive career behind him in the modern NBA. But what about Jordan's Bulls in the modern NBA? Find out by clicking this video.